Today I'm going to show you how to fix an old rocking chair. And I have this old rocking chair turned upside down. And uh, what has happened is over the years this uh, rocking chair has just seen a little too much weather and it broke loose uh, at the leg. I've already drilled the hole in here and once I done that I thought man I should have made a video so just ignore that there is a hole there. I'm still going to show you how I repaired this. So first thing you want to do is you want to get you a dowel about the size that it still does not take up too much of the uh, the log that you're going into. So uh, this is, needs to be about about a third or half the size of this particular log that you're going into. So what you want to do is you want to take your uh, your dowel and you want to line it up. If you notice, I got it lined up with this log here. The uh, the back support of this rocking chair. This is the back side of the, the rocker. Of course, it'd be the same even if it was on the front. But what you wanna do is you wanna take that and you see how I have lined it up along with that log. Now what that does is that gives me a straight to work with so that I know the angle that I want to use my, uh, my drill. That way when I drill my hole, I am not going in at a funny angle. You don't want your drill bit coming out the side anywhere around here. You want your drill bit to come straight down. So you take your dowel, and of course I've only got one hand to work with because I'm using the uh, camera with the other. So I'm holding this up way beyond where I want it to. So I'll show you a little deeper here what I'm talking about. And as I said, I have already drilled my hole, but as you can see, when I have the, uh, when I've got this dowel lined up through here to show me the angle that I want of my drill bit, that's what I did is I just lifted it up there and uh, that way I knew what angle to go with. And now I've got, I've got this drilled in probably somewhere around this deep. So when I cut off my dowel, I'll be cutting off a piece about five to six inches here, and it will stick above here, and that's okay, because inside this hole is actually what I would refer to here in the south as wallered out. Uh, the bugs have got in here and eat up a little bit. So what I wanna do is when I, when I uh, cut this dowel and put down inside of here, I'm going to take some sawdust and I am going to try to cram as much sawdust inside this wallered hole so that uh, as glue and this dowel and the sawdust inside of here hopefully will fill that cavity that's inside of there. So uh, anyway, let me go ahead and get this dowel cut down to a little bit shorter length and uh, give it a little, make it a little easier to work with and I'll get my sawdust and glue and we'll go to the next phase. All right, now I said this is uh, an heirloom, but uh, actually I'm just treating it as if it was because I'm sure that's why you're here. But anyway, uh, we don't want to mess up Granny's rocker. So I put a bunch of toilet paper up under here and I have uh, used some masking tape and uh, I'm going to have a lot of glue in here. So when that glue starts to seep out, I want this toilet paper to absorb it. And uh, I should be able to get this toilet paper off of here. Uh, not too difficult, but uh, I may regret that move. But uh, anyway, I did not want the glue running all down this leg. So uh, if I have to deal with the battle of uh, removing this this big wad of glue and toilet paper later, I guess that's better than having to fight the entire uh, run of this uh, leg here. So anyway, uh, I've got that taped on there to absorb some uh, some of the uh, the glue. All right, now in my wood shop. I've got a lot of tools that make a whole lot of dust. So I've got this bucket of sawdust here and I have a sifter screen. And I don't know what this is used for originally. I don't know if, uh, if you sift flour through this or what, but anyway, I took this old sifter pan here and you can take sawdust and you can sift it through the pan and that way you can get fines, real fine sawdust out of it i tell you why I like that is because jobs like I'm about to do, if I needed some thick, heavy sawdust to fill a, a cavity or a void, I can use pieces like this right here. 
But if I had an area that would be visible to the outside and I needed some real fine sawdust, I'd use the sawdust that's already went through the sifter. So uh, there's your little trick for the day, kind of help you out down the road. Well, it's been raining out here today and I'm gonna get this dowel wet. I don't have running water in my shop, so I'm just gonna get the dowel in this dirty old water here and get some of this dirt water in there. That'll make it slide a little better in there and help activate the glue a little bit from what I understand. But uh, anyway, I'm not worried about the water being dirty. It's going into something that's wood, so uh, you know it's not like wood is one of the cleanest things you'll deal with in a day's time. All right, so now I'm going to show you how I get the uh, sawdust down into these holes here. If you can see that right there is a that crack beside the uh, the rocker and the uh, support. I just take this sawdust and I just pour it on there like that. You can take a hammer, you can take anything, but all you want to do is just peck, peck on that wood so that the uh, sawdust will vibrate down and it falls down into that crack. And uh, every so often I'll squirt a little glue, pour some more sawdust, beat on it a little bit, let the sawdust go down in there. So uh, that's how I get the void filled. And all this sawdust, it's on the floor. I sweep it up and I just put it right back over the sifter that I showed you a while ago and let it go back down into the can. So that way I still got plenty of sawdust anytime I need it. Well, I tried to get it on video and it didn't work out so well, but I'm going to tell you what I did. Inside of here, there was some cavities. So what I did is I took some glue and mixed it up with some sawdust made like a paste. I took my finger inside of here and just packed it inside of that cavity. That way this cavity is completely full of sawdust uh, mixture and uh, as this all dries, everything will bond together here. And I used uh, Gorilla Glue, um, the wood glue. Let me show you that. That's, uh, that's what I used on it. So the thing about this, uh, this type of glue, it will expand and it will come out of here. And again, it will try to come out the bottom, of course, with gravity wanting to pull it down that way. Uh, after uh, I get this settled, as I've got it now, I could actually turn it upside down, hoping that everything would run this way because once I cut this off, uh, after it dries, um, you're not gonna see the bottom anyway. Plus, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of cutting down here, so it's probably gonna rough up the bottom a little bit. So, uh, matter of fact, I believe I'm going to go ahead and turn this uh, rocker upside down. Or turn it upright, I guess is what I should say, because right now it's upside down. So, I'm going to go ahead and turn it upright and uh, let all the glue try to stay down on this end. Now, to uh, get rid of this uh, dowel top that I've got sticking out of here, I've got this cheap saw that I got at Harbor Freight. And I tell you what, this is the only good thing I've ever got out of that junkie store. But uh, it works great in this condition uh, that I'm using it in today. So what you want to do is you want to keep your blade flat to the uh, rocker as much as possible so that you do not leave much of that dowel sticking up. And I believe once I get this cut, a little bit's going to stick up there. And I think if I hit it one more good time while this glue is still wet, I believe I should be able to get it to go all the way down and leave this completely flush across the top here. And there's what it looks like after I've cut it off. So it's very smooth across here. That worked out great. So again, I'm just going to flip this over. And uh, I believe I'm going to try also to see if I can't push a little more sawdust from up under this side here as I've got it upright. So uh, help try to get this thing to stay as sturdy as I can. And I tell you what, it wouldn't hurt if you've got a uh, an air nailer just to run you a, a nail right through here. That'll get it right through this wood and it'll go through this dowel and keep everything stationary there. Well, I got it all put together. I got everything finished up. I showed you what I did. And I tell you what, this thing's got some more years left in it. It didn't even take me I know it didn't take 10 minutes to fix this thing. So, hey, uh, Granny's been complaining for years about you needing to fix her chair. Get out there and fix her chair. 
it ain't, it ain't worth it to listen to all that racket. Get that thing fixed. Man, I bought this rocking chair, I think $2, I think it was, something like that, at an auction. So, uh, hey, if you ever see see something like this at an auction and everybody else is scared of it, now you know how to fix one. I'll end up selling this for 40 50 bucks at the flea market because a lot of people love this vintage look. So, uh, look at that. Look at that. You can't make that vintage look like that. You can fake it, but it won't look as good as this. So there we go, folks. Hey, y'all have fun. I appreciate it. Appreciate y'all watching. Hit the like and subscribe and all that fun stuff, and I'll show you something else down the road. Matter of fact, I have a video where I show you how to make a log rocking chair just like that right there. So uh, check that out on my channel, too. See y'all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.